everyone and welcome back to another vlog. Thank you so much as always for tuning in and taking your time out to come and watch this video. So today's video is all about wound healing and I just have to warn you now I haven't got any plasters and I've just cut myself so I have a makeshift bandage. That's not how to wound heal but you know what if that's all you got it's all you got. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to talk about is the stages of wound healing and these are different stages at uh, different points of the wound healing process and the, the amazing things that your body does to protect you in a way. So the first stage is hemostasis. I'm going to put a picture here so you can have a look at it and see what sort of phase this is. So this phase is literally just the first point of action when you get a wound, that's it, that all of your body is going to kick in, swing into action. So your vessels will start to narrow, platelets are going to rush to the site as well to sort of start that clotting process to heal over so that nothing can get in and nothing can get out of your body. And that's when it's going to form a little plug over the wound just to prevent any bacteria from getting in, but also from your blood to stop getting out. Stage two is the inflammation stage. And you might see some redness and swelling around the wound edges this is a very good sign of inflammation and your white blood cells all race to the site to clear the area of any bacteria and growth that might be starting to develop in that wound site to try and help prevent infections the third stage is called the proliferative stage i still can't say this word i'm going to put it here just for your information but this is really like the rebuilding your healing process is really kicking in now blood cells are starting to arrive to build the new skin and they're there just to give your cells sort of the oxygen and nutrients they need to help that skin healing process. But not just the skin, but actually new blood vessels as well form around it. And collagen also starts forming, which helps rebuild the damaged area. So basically, it's just remodelling of your skin and tissues just to make it look nice and shiny. And the final phase is the remodelling phase. This is the final phase in your wound healing. This is also the longest phase to your wound healing and this can take anywhere up to 21 days and two years, would you believe? Even longer for some people, especially if you've got other factors to count like diabetes or if you've got an impairment somewhere that's gonna delay that wound healing, it's gonna be even longer. But in this phase, it's the ongoing collagen synthesis, which then sort of continues to remodel and rebuild that skin and tissue that we were talking about in the previous phase. And also the fibres are going to be reorganised and it's all just going to hopefully be this fresh, beautiful, lovely new skin on top. And also in this stage, you're going to have freshly healed epidermis, which is the top layer of your skin and a freshly healed dermis underneath. So next, we're going to talk about the assessment of a wound. I just wanted to go through all of the different types of tissue types that you might see on a wound just to help you make that assessment to see which one it is and what stage it's at. So first is the epithelial tissue. I don't know if I've said that right, but I've said it anyway. I'm going to put the word here and a picture here of what it should look like. This is going to be a nice pink colour, pearly sort of skin. It's going to look good. And you normally see this when the wound is actually healing well and you've got that nice fresh layer coming across. It is, it's a good sign if it's doing that. Next up, we have granulation tissue. So if you've got an open wound, this is where all of the new tissue is starting to form. The new blood vessels are formed and it's going to look this red um, sort of meaty kind of colour. I'm going to put a picture again here so you can see what I'm talking about. But this is kind of what it looks like. However, you can get a very unhealthy version of this. And this is what we call overgranulation. So there's a number of things that can cause this. Some, it could be a type of infection. So you might want to treat it with a different type of dressing, for example. If you've got contact bleeding, if you're starting to see blood when you're wiping it and cleaning it, if little pieces are coming off, that's normally a good indicator of an infection as well. So it's really important that you find the underlying cause of what's causing that. And sometimes it's just the environment, it's in the wrong environment. Um, so maybe try a different dressing, um, sometimes a steroid cream to reduce that. Just have a look at the guidelines and how to treat overgranulation in your area. Slough. I know one of my favourites is slough. <laughs> so this is this is a, a, again a stage of wound healing as well. This is part of the um, inflammatory phase. This is where you've got all of the white sort of dead blood cells hanging around, um, and it's not normally a problem. You, you can normally sort of wipe it away, and that will be fine, and the wound will heal lovely. But sometimes it can be a bit of a problem if that's starting to turn a different colour, for example, like more of a greeny colour. If it's looking a bit dark in colour, 
um, if it's getting really, really thick and an offensive smell, for example, you might be starting to think, okay, is this infected? But that will then make you decide what dressing to put on that sort of, of a wound. You may see necrosis at some point and this is basically it's dead tissue that's all it is it's dead tissue um depending on the wound and where it is you will assess that differently and if it was something like on a joint or if it was on the foot for example and that was necrotic you want to be thinking okay what is this blood supply like is there a good blood supply flowing to that area because it shouldn't really be getting at that point where it's necrotic um so you might want to do a bit more of an assessment and have a look into the patient's history as well and work out what you're going to do with this wound so now we've talked about the terminology with looking at wounds and looking what they look like. You want to put in a percentage of that in your in your documentation. So if you could see some slough, you want to put, OK, is this 10 percent sloughy or 50 50? Is it 50 percent slough and 50 percent granulation? You're trying to work out how how much of something there is and it will give a just a, to give a good accurate description so that if someone else looks at it they know what they're looking out for and if this has changed since you've last seen it and the way I do it is I think of it like a clock face so I split it up into sections and I go okay so that little section is only that so much so then I can work out an accurate percentage if that makes sense and that's how I normally do mine and I think thinking of it as a clock face when you're assessing wounds is just a really good tip to sort of be able to measure it as well as assessing what percentage is what which takes me nicely on to measuring your wound. So like I said, as a clock face, you want to go to the longest points. So you're going to go 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock and uh, 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock. So that the vertical, horizontal every single time. And you want to go to the longest points that way. So if it's just slightly up or down, that's okay. If it's slightly up or down that way, that's okay. But as long as you're all following that same pattern, then you will all be measuring it accurately if someone else is measuring it after you. But just think of it as a clock face, longest points to longest points. And you want to do it in millimetres as well. And also if there's a depth to it, so there, there are little probes that you can have with little measurements on to measure the depth of a wound if you've got a cavity type wound. But if it's superficial, then I wouldn't worry. Just put superficial wound on your notes. Sorry, I forgot to mention exudate. When I was talking about slough and granulation and things, I, I forgot to mention exudate. So I'm just going to quickly cover that now because we're going to go on to dressings, which it'll just flow nicely. Trust me. Um, so exudate is it. I just think of it as the fluid coming out of the wound. It's uh, quite clear sometimes. Um, it can be quite yellow in colour. But if that starts going green, then you want to start thinking, OK, is this pseudomonas infection? That's normally a good indicator, actually, if it's green in colour and a bit of a, an odour to it. Then you're going to be thinking infection. Do I need to treat this with antibiotics or different microbial dressings, for example? And again, you want to measure the amount of exudate that's coming out in your notes. So we go by different levels so dry if it's dry you'd put moist if it was just a little bit on the dressing wet so your dressing is wet or your dressing is completely saturated or it's leaking so it's actually leaking through the dressing and the bandaging sorry guys it just got really dark in here all of a sudden so i've had to put my um light on so yeah sorry about the change in lighting in this video not very professional i know but as long as i'm giving you the information it's fine <laughs> so that last bit took us really nicely on to dressings Firstly, think about what you're going to wash this wound with um if you've got an open wound i would use a sterile solution so for example if this is just a superficial wound a skin tear or something like that someone's just knocked their arm or something and you're just giving it a clean up and putting a plaster on i would go with just simple saline because that's all you need but if you've got something that's quite sluffy and it's got this clear film of kind of bacteria on the top you're going to want something a bit more intense so my go-to is prontosan i don't know you might have something completely different but this just helps break down that biofilm that's developed on the top of the wound so that it can heal then when you're picking your dressing you want to think about your wound assessment so we've just done that so you're looking at is it granulating is it over granulating is there an infection is this wound just healing nicely um, is there a high amount of slough? Is there a high amount of exudate? If there's a lot of exudate coming out, you want something that's going to really absorb that as well. You want more of an absorbent dressing. If this if this wound's quite dry and it's not infected, then you can use more of a simple dressing. So I've got a little table here just to help me remember on my laptop so that I can give you the 
secret things or the things that I do. So looking at your wound, if it's barely wet and it's, there's not much fluid coming out of it, low exudate, but it looks infected, then you want an antimicrobial dressing. So you're going to go things like Medi Honey, Idaflex or Iodine, maybe a silver dressing, maybe um, an alligate dress, al alleviate, alligate, allergy, alleviate dressing. Sorry, I can't speak. Alleviate dressing, which is um, a, like a seaweed dressing. And if it was a more painful wound, then you might think of some soft type dressings that isn't going to irritate it or cause it more pain. So things like the Medi Honey and the Iodine or the Silver Dressing, that will be your primary dressing. The first dressing that you put it on is your primary dressing, what is directly going on to that wound. Then on top of that, you want a secondary dressing. So something just to seal it in, protect it, keep that dressing in place because they don't come as adhesives or anything like that. So you want something as a secondary dressing on top of that. This again, if you have got no exudate, it's not leaking very much, it's okay. You can just use a simple dressing, something like Meepaw, Softpaw, um, something with a film dressing on it with a little pad, something like that. Something just really simple and soft that's going to protect your patient's wound. So you could use, if they were in quite a lot of pain or if they're allergic to adhesives, you might just put like a little soft pad over the top and then put like a little bandage over the top or a little stocking over the top just to keep it in place. And that's perfect as well. If there's quite a moderate amount of exudate coming out and the dressing is quite um, wet when you're taking the dressing off, then you might want to think about getting some sort of absorbent, like a super absorbent padding or a Zetrovit padding, which is quite a thick little padding that goes atop and it absorbs all of that moisture. I would also think about protecting the skin around it as well. That is another thing actually you should always think about when dealing with wounds as well is what is the skin around it looking like because you don't want that to break down, you don't want that to get damaged, so you want to wash that down, get some cream on it. If it's a very, very wet wound, then you want to put something around it to protect the skin around it. So we use LBF where I am, but you can use things like a Cavalon spray, something that's going to protect that wound around it and stop that skin from breaking down anymore. But yes, if you've got a moderate amount of exudate, you're going to want something to absorb all of that. And also, if this is an infection, again, you want to use your Medi Honey, your Silver, your antimicrobial dressings, seaweed dressings, those sort of types of dressings, and potentially think about some antibiotics as well from the doctor. But the secondary dressing should just be um, like a super absorbent sort of dressing or an absorbent padding or an absorbent adhesive type of dressing. We use clinoderm if it's an adhesive. And also if there was no infection, then you would just put the super absorbent as your primary dressing. You wouldn't need any Medi Honey or anything like that underneath. You just put that as, as your primary dressing. And again, if you've got like something that's soaking wet, it's leaking through the bandaging, again, you're going to want to pad it out realistically just to absorb that. And you might want more of an absorbent um, first dressing as well. Things like um, Exu Fibre is really good because that absorbs it and it's got the fibres in it to help with the healing process. And then you might want um, like a, a super thick padding on top of that and then bandaging around it just to absorb that moisture. So just a quick run down. If you've just got a simple wound, it's okay. It's not leaking, it's not infected. You can just put a simple dressing on there. If you've got something that looks a bit infected, you might want to consider antibiotics. You might want to treat it locally with a local dressing like antimicrobials, like Medi Honey, maybe a silver dressing, an alginate dressing, those sort of types of dressing. And then if you're having a high amount of fluid leaking out of it, you want to think foam, padding, pad it out. You also might get the opposite. You might get a really dehydrated wound bed as well. So something that's really dry, that slough's gone really hard in the middle. So you want to try and put something in there that's going to soften that and promote wound healing. So something like a hydrogel, something that's going to promote moisture, promote all of that and just hopefully get in that healing again. Because that's not really not going to heal very well if that's solid. So I'm just going to quickly go through the different types of dressings and first up, like I said, the alginate dressings is a type of seaweed and this can be used to absorb fluid, promote hydration and um, sort of debride in the wound if it needs debriding and moisture control. Then we have the foams that I spoke about, that's just to absorb any excess fluid and help that healing. Medi Honey that I spoke about um, helps to rehydrate the wound, it helps to debride the wound and it's also a really good antimicrobial. Hydrocolloids, so this is things like you might have seen Aquacel type dressing and this just helps promote moisture control as well in the wound. It can absorb fluid as well and help with debridement. Hydrogels pretty much says what it says, it hydrates your wound. 
good for debridement, cooling and moisture control as well. Iodine is literally just an antimicrobial action type dressing. PHMB dressing is again any type of antimicrobial dressing. You can also get things like activated charcoal dressings which I've never used but you can use that sort of thing for like odour control as well. Silver dressing is literally what it says on the tin. It is a dressing that contains silver in it and that's to fight infections like the medi honey and antimicrobial dressing. So yeah, so like I said, you really just need to assess your wound bed and how it's healing to what type of dressing you would put on it. So just to summarise, we have talked about what you're going to clean your wound with, how you're going to assess the wound and how you're going to pick your dressings and the different types of tissues that you might see in uh, wound healing stages and how to manage wounds out there. But if in doubt, you will always have your tissue viability nurses out there for any help that you might go to your mentor if you're a student nurse or you might go to a more senior nurse if you're a qualified nurse. Um, and that's OK if you if you're struggling to decide what to do with this wound, like we all do it. I've done it many, many times. I've looked at a wound. I've gone. I've got no idea. Um, and I've had to go to other people. So, yeah. So don't be afraid to ask for help. It's always better to get help and go from there than make the wrong decision and potentially delay that wound healing. Because we want to get this healed as fast as and quick as possibly and prevent infection. Also, I'm going to put a load of links below, so have a look at the details below. There's going to be a load of wound care links in there for you to have a look at, look around. Really good links, that's what I use, so please have a look at them. Get to know your wounds and make sure you're doing the right things out there, guys. So that is it from me for another week. I shall see you all next time.